this day as we join together for our daily devotion from St. Matthew's Church of Glendale, California. Let us open with prayer. Lord, fill our hearts with your love, and as you revealed to us by an angel the coming of your Son as a human being, so lead us through his suffering and death to the glory of his resurrection. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the girdle of his waist, and faithfulness the girdle of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The suckling child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of the Lord's might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the evil one. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your loins with trust, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace. Besides all these, taking the shield of faith with which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that utterance may be given me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. And a reading from St. John's Gospel, the third chapter. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe in him is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, but men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest their deeds should be exposed. But the one who does what is true comes to the light, that it may be clearly seen that by their deeds, their deeds have been wrought by God. Our devotional thought today comes from Justice Jonas, writing about the death 
of Martin Luther. Martin Luther said, Dear Lord, I am in much pain and fear. I am on my way. I shall now probably remain in Eisleben. Dr. Jonas and Master Coleus reassured him, Reverend Pastor, call upon your dear Lord Jesus Christ, our High Priest, our Mediator. You have perspired well and freely. God grant you will feel better. Luther replied by saying, Yes, it is a cold, deathly sweat. I shall give up the ghost, because the illness has become more severe. Whereupon Luther spoke as follows. O Heavenly Father, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, God of all consolation, I thank you that you have revealed your Son Jesus Christ to me, in whom I believe, of whom I have preached and in whom I have confessed, whom I have loved and praised. I beg you, my Lord Jesus Christ, command my small soul. O Heavenly Father, though I shall have to leave this body and be torn from this life, I know for certain that I shall remain with you eternally, and that no one can tear me from your hands. Luther fur further said, God so loved the world that he gave it his only Son, so that none who believe in him should perish, but enjoy a life everlasting. And quoting the words of the 118th Psalm, We have a God of salvation and Lord, Lord who leads us away from death. With that, the master offered another medication, which he carried in his pocket for use in emergencies. Luther took a spoonful of it, but said once again, I am on my way. I shall give up the ghost. Quite hurriedly, Luther spoke three times thus, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Now that Luther had commended his soul into the hands of God the Heavenly Father, Luther grew still. Because Luther had grown so quiet, Dr. Jonas and Master Coleus called to him, Pastor, do you wish to die, standing up for Jesus and for the teaching that you have preached? Luther spoke, so one could hear it clearly, yes. With this, Luther turned to the right and fell asleep for nearly a quarter of an hour, raising hope for improvement. Now Luther's face had turned pale. His feet and nose had grown cold. He drew a deep but soft breath, and with this he gave up the ghost. Quietly and with great forbearance, without moving so much as a finger, no one observed any kind of disquiet, bodily suffering, or pain of death. Rather, as Simon put it in his song, Luther simply joined the Lord in peaceful sleep. With him the words of John came true, Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a person keep my saying, he shall never see death. We close with a prayer from the theologian Erasmus. Sever me from yourself, that I may be grateful to you. May I perish to myself, that I may be safe in you. May I die to myself, that I may live in you. May I wither in myself, that I may blossom in you. May I be emptied of myself, that I may abound in you. May I be nothing to myself, that I may be all to you. Amen.